for me to stumble. Perhaps we can, he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly ashamed for they, shall, will, be, they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Lord, in your steadfast love, answer me. Lord, in your steadfast love, answer me. It is for your sake that I have borne reproach, that shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my kindred, an alien to my mother's children. It is zeal for your house that has consumed me. The insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Lord, in your steadfast love, answer me. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord. At an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me. With your steadfast help, rescue me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Lord, Lord in, in your steadfast love, answer me. Let the oppressed see it and be glad. 
You who seek God, let your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his own that are in bonds. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves in them. Lord, in your steadfast love, answer me. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, just as sin came into the world through one man and death came through sin, so death spread to all people because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have, have the grace of God and the free gift and the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Spirit of Truth will testify on my behalf, says the Lord, and you also are to testify. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Fear no one, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not to spare a soul for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid, you are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before humans, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before humans, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So just before getting into my homily, I just wanted to share with you the good news that we received uh, a few days ago, that here in Nova Scotia, as of next weekend, we'll be able to reopen the churches and be able to have Mass for a maximum of 50 people, depending on the size of the church, as long as there's the possibility for social distancing, we'll be able to have up to 50 people. So it's a first step, baby steps, but we give thanks for, for this possibility. But I ask you over the course of this week to keep the pastors and those involved with getting this set up, keep them in your prayers because there's a lot of protocols to follow. There's a lot of things to get in place. So not all parishes will even be ready to open for next weekend. So in case your parish is one of those parishes, Try not to be upset, offer it up as, as a sacrifice, and continue to pray that everything will be in place soon enough. Because I know here especially, Father Francesco and the parishioners of, 
St. Francis and St. Clair are working very hard to try to get things organized. So keep everybody in your prayers and hopefully we'll be able to, at least some of us, uh, come back together in order to, uh, to celebrate the Eucharist and, and receive the Eucharist sacramentally. And so today, the theme, the underlying theme today is fear. In this little gospel alone, Jesus says three times to not fear. Fear no one. Do not fear those who can kill the body. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. And we see this throughout the Gospels. I don't know exactly how many times, but it's quite a few times that Jesus says, Do not be afraid. And so, if Christ is telling us this, and He's not telling us just as uh, you know, a good suggestion, you know, trying to give us a, you know, a little bit of assurance, it's pretty much the force of a command. Do not be afraid. So if Jesus is repeating this over and over again, well, that means that there's probably good reason for me not to be afraid. Now first, we need to distinguish between different types of fear. We can see three types of fear, one of which is really good, one of which is okay and natural, and one which is never good. The first one is the fear of the Lord, the fear of God, that's even one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Well, this type of fear is a fear of awe, it's, it's in the sense of awe and reverence, a fear of being separated from God. St. Paul tells us in one of his letters, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And so this type of fear points us to the only thing that matters. The only thing really worth being afraid of is that being separated from God for all eternity, from disappointing Him, from not being with Him. So this is the good type of fear. The middle type of fear that's natural, well, is the fear of you know, losing our life, our natural life, fear of losing our limbs, fear of, you know, real danger. And so Jesus isn't telling us, you know, do not be afraid, you know, throw caution to the wind, walk down the middle of the street, and don't worry about getting hit by a bus. Well, that's just silly. <laughs> that fear is, is okay. It gives us, you know, common sense and, you know, makes us be responsible for, for this life that is a gift from God that we need to be concerned about and take care of. But the third type of fear is a worldly fear. It's a fear that worries about losing possessions, losing money, fear of losing our comfort and security, fear of losing our reputation, fear of being insulted or hurt by others. And, in some sense, fear of losing this life. I know I said that that's, that's also natural, but when the fear of losing this life overcomes the fear of losing heaven, then even that fear is not good. And so Jesus is telling us, do not be afraid. Why? Well, we heard it in the opening prayer of today. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. And so we do not need to be afraid. Because of the very fact that we are worth so much to our Heavenly Father. We are of more value than many sparrows. God rejoices in all of His creation. Everything He has created is good. But we, 
created in His image and likeness, we are very good. If you go back to Genesis, we are very good when God creates us. And He wants nothing more than to pour out His love into our hearts and our minds. He wants nothing more than for us to enjoy His life and ultimately to share in that life for all eternity in heaven. We know that this life is not the end. And so even if this life is taken from us, if we have put our faith in Jesus Christ, if we have professed our faith, acknowledged Him before men, we have nothing to fear. For great will be our reward in heaven. John, in his first letter, tells us that true love casts out all fear. And so it's when we recognize God's love for us, when we are mindful of it, when we allow it to penetrate our hearts and our minds, when we are convicted within ourselves that we are loved, we are treasured by God, what else matters? What is there to fear? What is there to worry about? Nothing. And nothing can separate us from that love. Except sin. And what is sin other than choosing something other than God? Choosing to walk away from God. Choosing to reject Him. That's what sin is. It's not about how many times you pick your nose. It's about... Are you giving your heart? Are you open to the love of God? John Paul II said at the beginning of his pontificate, when he first became Pope, until the very end, he would repeat these words, Do not be afraid. Open wide the doors of your heart to Christ. And when we do, when we allow God's love to be the most important thing in our lives, we will have nothing to be afraid. And so if we find ourselves afraid, stop. Take a moment to reflect. What is it I'm afraid of? And then when you discover what it is you're afraid of, remind yourself. Speak to your soul and say, do not be afraid. I have no reason to be afraid. And then we can turn our hearts back to the Lord, rejoicing in His love, and allowing that love to enter so as to cast out all fear. Do not be afraid. May the Lord bless you and keep you and convict you of His great love for you. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And now, with trust and confidence in our Father who loves us, let us offer to Him all of our prayers and petitions. 
And so we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for his guidance and protection by the Holy Spirit. And we pray for the Universal Church, for all of our brothers and sisters scattered throughout the world, especially those who are being persecuted for their faith, those who are laying down their lives at this moment. We pray that the Lord may fill them with his love and give them courage and strength. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Bishop Anthony, for Bishop Brian, for the Archdiocese of Halifax, Yarmouth. We pray for the reopening of the churches. We pray that all of us may walk together in peace and unity as we come to share in the one body of Christ. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our government leaders, for health care workers, health officials, for all of those who continue to look out for us and to, to guide us through this time of pandemic. We pray that they may be guided by the wisdom and truth of the Holy Spirit. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering. We pray for those who are near death, those who are afraid. We pray that the Lord may give them the gift of faith, that he may bring them healing and strength, and that they may know of his love. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who have died, especially for Patricia Slyber. We pray that the Lord may show them his mercy and welcome them into his heavenly kingdom. And for those left here to grieve, we pray that the Lord may console them. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer you these prayers and all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Please answer them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for His mercy and for His love. Amen. Amen. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised Jesus up from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Veni sum celi et terra, Gloria tua, O sana in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <clears throat> may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis, St. Clair, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Anthony, our bishop, Brian, his coadjutor, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep, says the Lord. Prayer of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, a happy Father's Day to all fathers out there. We pray a special prayer for you as we turn to our Blessed Mother. We entrust you to her motherly uh, intercession. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu, imulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui. Oh. Uh -huh. 
bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls.